Hey, this is Dan from MSS Enduralis. Welcome to the channel. You don't know anything about what's coming. Tonight, the vetting of the president continues as we bring you another edition of The Real Obama. Now, in this installment, we shine the spotlight on an executive order that the White House was hoping that you would never learn about. Now, the president signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order late Friday afternoon. And since that time, now the measure has been virtually ignored by the mainstream media. Now, the order essentially gives the president of the United States absolute power over any and all American resources during both times of peace and national crisis. Crisis. Now, this includes, but is not limited to, food and livestock, water, plants, energy, health resources, transportation, and construction materials, and gives the government the ability to, quote, control the general distribution of any material, including applicable services, in the civilian market. Now, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney laughed off a question about the document at today's briefing. Let's take a look. There's been some online commentary suggesting this gives the executive branch power to allocate energy, food, water in either peacetime or wartime. And there are some conservative blogs that are pushing the notion that this suggests the White House is preparing for a war with Iran. Can you explain what this executive order was? <laughs> <laughs> well, I cannot explain that reaction to it. I think it was a fairly uh, standard and routine uh, piece of business. Now, not everybody's laughing about this executive order. In fact, some have suggested this would give the president of the United States the authority to declare basically martial law during times of peace. And to be sure, this is simply the latest string of actions taken by the administration that ignore the basic principles of our Constitution. Joining me now in tonight's edition of The Real Obama, Jay Sekulow from the American Center for Law and Justice and Fox News contributor Lenny Davis. Guys, welcome back. I'm Hi, laughing John. about it, Sean. How are you? All right. Good to see. Well, let's give a little history here. Jay, we'll start with you because um, this was actually signed a similar National Defense Resources Preparedness by Bill Clinton. You have similar executive orders signed by sure. Dwight Eisenhower, George W. Bush. But there's a difference. There are some things that changed in this that I think has brought, I think, legitimate criticism and concern. Can you go through that? No, I think you're absolutely right. The, the, the idea of this act is nothing new. It's, presidents have had this since the 1950s. Uh, but what is different about this one, different than any of the other one, is the definition of national defense. Uh, it's incorporated what's called the Stafford Act. I don't want to get overly technical. But this gives the president much broader authority than any of the previous acts. In fact, and Lanny, Lanny may remember this, the previous acts didn't give incorporation of the Stafford Act, which is a civilian uh, civil situation uh, where you, the president would have unlimited authority, subject, of course, to checks and balances. And we, we can't ignore checks and balances here. But the definition of national defense is broader than it has ever been under any of these previous executive orders. And I think that's the most significant aspect of this. And by the way, the president's getting flack from the left and the right. The left said this is preparation for the war in Iran. That's why the president's doing this, a potential war with Iran and the concern about uh, the energy resources of our country. And of course, conservatives are saying this is unchecked power. Yeah. There's a balance here. But the one thing that's very different, Sean, is the fact that the national defense definition is different than it has ever been and much broader than it's All ever right, been. Lenny, with this very specific section, and Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, is 801J, if I recall. J, and, right. That's correct. Why would the president change that definition? And, Lanny, you're an expert in media. Nobody is as good as you. Uh, if you want to release <laughs> something that you don't want people to find and you're in the White House, when do you release it? Late on a Friday uh, afternoon, hoping nobody pays attention to it. Why would Actually, they release? I used to release. I used to release things at 10 o'clock on July 3rd. That was a really good. Yeah, uh, that's a good time. I got it. Uh, nice to hear you, Jay, being your scholarly you self. And I want to compliment Sean Hannity for the first time in a long time. Oh boy. Of not being uh, slanted and describing this as a bipartisan act that actually goes back to Franklin Roosevelt, Jay, and through Harry right. Truman, not just the 1950s. But he changed it. But, Lanny, we well, got to that part. You, you, you know, right. you're wasting so some valuable air time. <laughs> we, we got you that You don't like now. me complimenting He's you, He's being Sean. nice. Uh, I the second point I want to make, the, 
Uh, the second point I want to make, aside from Sean Hannity being a good guy, is that this is really not a significant risk to America. I don't know why he made those changes, to answer your question, but there's no risk here because every president needs authority in times of emergency, such as a nuclear attack or something that is another 9-11, and this authority has been on the books, and President Obama won't misuse it. The real question is, why are the extremes on the left and the right so quick to jump beyond the facts and look at the the worst possible interpretation, and it's almost I, I can lunacy give you the if answer. you look at some of these. Tell me. Uh, and, and yeah. because, the, because of the way the president's acted, for example, we have a very specific yeah. process for recess appointments. And with the National Labor Board appointments of the president, remember, he didn't go through that process. That's right. The, the conservatives like myself, Jay, I think would argue um, yeah. that the health care mandate is not constitutional. Uh, the Cato Institute actually has the top 10 instances where the president is pretty much thumbed his nose at the Constitution, uh, and so there is this suspicion, Jay, it's I'll go to you. Yeah. Yeah, there's the, I think the, the biggest problem here is context. It is a uh, document dump in the sense that it comes late on a Friday evening. That's an interesting situation. It's second is the context of the other situations. You talk about the Attorney General and the Fast and Furious situation. Then the Attorney General said he was concerned about what the NYPD was doing, which was clearly within the law, and I think the, the uh, Department of Justice has now backed off on that wisely. Uh, but you look at the context, and then the definitional aspect, and, and I think the definition is the problem. I don't believe, and I, I agree, that the president could get away with this because, number one, you've got a Congress, you've got an active media, that's why we're here tonight. But you've got to ask yourself why this overly broad definition of national defense, why incorporate the Stafford Act, which is, talks about foreign and national interests and, and tsunamis and, and situations which the president would have control over under normal source, but why do you have to expand it in the form of this executive order? That's the concern. Of course, executive orders have been challenged yeah. before in court. Let me throw this so to that's the, the thing here. I don't understand the national defense issue. That's the biggest thing. You know, and, and I think what this is, you know, uh, Woodrow Wilson progressives like yourself, Lanny, w w one of the things we conservatives have a problem is, is you guys believe in this concept that the Constitution is a li living, breathing document, and so you can ignore issues like checks and balances and separation of powers, like in the case of recess appointments. So I think we're looking at this differently, and that is that in, in this particular case, does it give a president pretty much Im impunity to do whatever they want? And why that, change the definition, considering the president has thumbed his nose at the Constitution in the past? Uh, first, first of all, my point of view is he hasn't thumbed his nose, and if the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional, let the Supreme Court decide that, not Jay and uh, J Mr. Justice Hannity. But most importantly, this is more <laughs> reflective of the paranoia on the left and the right that's going on in America and polarizing this country so badly. Jay and I, as Jay is a conservative and myself as a liberal, are able to exchange views in a civil way with Sean Hannity as a civil moderator. What's going on on the Twitter and the internet is lunacy. If you read yeah. some of these comments, it's yeah. not Jay analyzing this calmly. It's complete well, why are we lunacy. Attacking people that have and a nobody is view. mentioning Ronald Reagan. And nobody is. I'm only saying that it's the extreme interpretation that causes the polarization in this country. Yeah, I know. Sean. And, and the president and has never contributed to, to this it. by saying Republicans want but, dirty air and water and want kids with autism, and Down syndrome, fending for themselves. That, He's never contributed to this. At all. Yeah. I don't like rhetoric. I don't like the extreme rhetoric. Sometimes yeah. I think the president has gone too far, and so has the right. Republican Congress. And when there was a Republican right. president, there were recess appointments, guys. So let's be even. Problem. No, not recess appointments while they were in session. That right. never happened this, until this Obama. This session was one until senator Obama. holding the floor. This, right, senator was, this session was one senator holding the floor. Excuse and that me. was an abuse it's of very the Constitution. The Constitution says they are recess session. appointments only when they're in recess, That's though, right. and they're not in Recess. With one That's senator and coming up, on is it possible the that the president? Their closing message, but I feel compelled to say what I'm about to say. Now I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one-world communist government. executive order signed by President Obama has sparked controversy on both sides of the political aisle. The National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order was signed quietly 
Friday night. It gives the president the power to control U.S. resources. The Rules Committee is going to meet in the House. They are going to come up with a rule that makes it okay for them to do a same-day bill. So they'll pass this rule. It's, believe it or not, called martial law. This would give the president of the United States the authority to declare basically martial law during times of peace. There are new disturbing developments out of Washington tonight regarding the president's belief that he has the legal authority to assassinate U.S. citizens. Incredibly enough, it appears that our commander-in-chief actually believes that authority exists not only on foreign soil, but right here on American soil as well. But Senators McCain and Levin have added this legislation, which would authorize the president to declare the entire United States of America, all 50 states and all territories, to be a battlefield, right. even though there's no battle, thanks be to God, going on here. War on terror is different. And that would authorize him to use commander-in-chief authority in the United States to use the military to arrest people in the United States who, in the president's opinion, are enemies of the country. Particularly to hear President Obama claim the power to keep people in prison indefinitely with no charges against them, no conviction, no sentence, just imprisonment. Joining us now is former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. Dan, thanks a lot for joining us. What thanks. do you mean there's no such thing as gun control, only people control? Tell me what that means. Tucker, this is part of your ideological ploy by this administration. They're not being authentic with America, whether it's the sequester health care or the gun control issue. What they do is they manipulate an emotional crisis, a national emotional crisis, to further an ideological agenda which involves, involves the evaporation, the slow disintegration of your civil rights, your liberties, your ability to live and let live. And it's a disturbing pattern that frankly is really starting to get under my skin. The U.S. is funneling money into tracking systems that are threatening to make the very concept of privacy a thing of the past. It could mean people's every move being used against them to keep them under surveillance. The information age was an era nearly everybody embraced. But today's surveillance age, experts say, is a reality almost no one can escape. Uh, David, why does the DHS need 450 million hollow point bullets? Uh, that kind of ammo that they purchased from ATK, hollow point ammunition, as you had explained, uh, it's designed to, you know, tear through human flesh and then expand. It's designed to kill people. This is not the optimal uh, kind of ammo you would buy for target practice. It's more expensive and it's more precise. Do you think this is a sign that they're preparing for some sort of mass civil unrest? So they have an open bid right now, DHS, for even more ammunition for 175 million rounds of uh, 223 caliber rifle ammo. It's almost identical to the ammunition used by NATO peacekeeping forces. So that's very interesting. Uh, are they planning on some kind of widespread economic unrest in the U.S. that would require uh, NATO forces to help us out? Half a billion dollars in surplus military weaponry from the Pentagon, um, which is authorized through the Pentagon's 1033 program. Um, during the late 70s, Congress passed legislation uh, called Posse Comitatus, barring the military from operating on American soil. And in the early 80s, there was an effort to circumvent that in Congress by arming police with military-grade weaponry. And now we're seeing that play out in the streets. People in the inner city in the U.S. have been experiencing this. So civilians in the U.S. are now up against basically uh, military-style policing. The battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. <laughs> the Department of Homeland Security sent to law enforcement agencies across the country warning about the potential for an increase in right-wing extremist activity.